All right. Welcome to another edition of the Super Pro Podcast, the heartbeat of home service excellence. I'm Roland Leitenberg. I'm one of the co-founders of House Call Pro, and I'm an advocate for all the pros out there. Uh, through House Call Pro, I've had the privilege of helping hundreds of thousands of pros just like you guys. We're going to be talking all about, well, air ducts. We're going to be talking about dryer vents. We're going to be talking about all kinds of fun stuff, uh, maybe even snakes. We'll talk about that too and see what it has to do with anything. No, it's not like the snake in the toilet. There's like real snakes. Um, today, I'm super excited. We're going to welcome Dave Zeldin to the show. He's the owner of Dryer Vent Pros. Uh, they're, they're located in uh, Arizona, but they service the Phoenix and Prescott area. They've got five employees, uh, three vans on the road. Their goal is to hit 750K this year. Uh, so built a, a great business over the past uh, five or six years here. And we're just here to, to learn from Dave. So welcome to the show, Dave. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So um, you started your business six years ago. Um, what were you doing before and why were you like, all right, we're going to do this now. We're going to get in the dry rent business. What was that like aha moment for you? Yeah, um, that's a good question. So my background is plumbing, heating and air conditioning and a little bit of electrical. That's what I've done since I was a kid. Um, and the aha moment for just starting a business for me was having my first child. Um, my wife was pregnant with my first uh, child, my daughter, Willow. That was kind of what lit the fire under me to start my own business. And um, just happened to notice here where I live in Prescott, there was nobody actually specializing in dryer exhaust. Um, mm -hmm. So I just kind of went for it and it just took off on me. And uh, now, you know, we do dryer, dryer exhaust and air duct cleaning now. So you, you've added another division to your company, essentially, like another service. Um, yeah. I think a lot of pros are like, okay, I'm expanding. Do I keep doing more of the same or do I add like another division or a different kind of trade? Um, walk me through like how you did that and how that strategically kind of ties in your overall growth, your, your goals of growing the company. Yeah, that was, uh, it's, it's challenging. I'm actually still working through it. We've been, I don't know, live with the air duct side for about five months or so. Um, and we went back and forth between, do we change the name of the company? Do we start another company? Um, and ultimately we decided to just keep it all under the same umbrella. Um, however, we are in the process of a name change, um, cause as the name suggests dryer vent pros, um, that's what we used to focus on and now we're doing air ducts. So it seemed like, you know, a good idea to change the name, um, which is uh, vent pros, um, just taking the dryer off of it and just going with vent pros and yep. uh, still working through the, the legalities of that, but it is, uh, that part has been challenging. We get customers calling and wondering, are you vent pros? Are you dryer vent pros? And uh, we're just kind of working through the kinks of that right now. Um, sure. But uh, just keep and, going. And, what, and did you choose to add air ducts because they're so just like similar in a sense to, to dryer vents and it kind of fits in that same mold? Is it the same technician that can do both things? Like walk me through how you went uh, choosing that as the next avenue here for growth. Sure. Yeah. We, um, we constantly get calls. We always have, you know, do you guys do air ducts? And it's always like, Nope, we don't do it. And, uh, in trying to grow the business and trying to figure out, you know, services to add, um, air ducts seem like the right one. It kind of fits the mold of, of what we do as far as cleaning fence. Um, and we, we call it two divisions only because, uh, it's, it is different technicians, um, different training, different tools. Um, we've got an air duct truck that is specialized for just cleaning air ducts. It's a big box truck. Uh, and then our dryer vent side gets ran out of vans. And so we got our dryer exhaust technicians and we got our air duct cleaners. And uh, we kind of just keeping it separated. There is a little bit of overlap. Sometimes we'll pull someone from the dryer vent side to come help us on a big job um, as a helper. Um, but yeah, we're kind of keeping it separate as far as um, technicians and stuff goes. And how are you doing the hiring for that? Because I can assume that, you know, that's probably not the easiest thing when you're looking for something that specific. Or are you kind of, you're bringing people in and then training them up? Like, how how does that work? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, as you can imagine, you know, finding someone with the dryer vent cleaning experience might not be the easiest <laughs> thing. It's a, such a niche or even air duct. Um so yeah, anybody we hire, we bring them in. They don't know anything about what we do. You know, we train them, get them certified. Um, as far as finding the right people, I'll just have to admit I've gotten really lucky as far as my, my employees are all um, either family or really close friends. Um, 
which I think we're starting to run out of people uh, <laughs> that uh, that would fit in what we do. So um, I don't have a whole lot of advice on finding the right people. I've just gotten really lucky with having uh, people I can hire that are just great people. Yeah. And I think for a lot of businesses, definitely in the early stages is like tap your network, tap your friends, tap your family, look yep. for close referrals, and then start really building like an organic pipeline of just complete unknowns, you know, yeah. and waiting for yeah. that. But I mean, you've been able to grow really well, just tapping that network, which is, which is a great, uh, great golden nugget for sure. Yeah. So on the side, you're a professional snake wrangler. What does snake wrangling have to do with dryer vents or is there any kind of like overlap and, or is there anything from snake wrangling that you, that you take or use, uh, that helps you with your business? Oh gosh. You know, I don't think, I can't think of any sort of, uh, overlap there at all. You know, the, the snake stuff is just a hobby of mine. That's, uh, I go out and look for them and photograph them when I'm not working. Um, and it's kind of, my, it's my escape from work. So, you know, no overlap there is kind of nice, you know, when I'm stressed out about work, um, mm -hmm. I can go out and, uh, I mean, essentially I'm just hiking, you know, out in the, out in the woods, out in the mountains, the desert, you know, looking for reptiles and, uh, and photographing them. Um, I don't even think we've found snakes in a dryer vent or, or an air duct before, you know? So yeah, there's no overlap at all. It's just, just for fun. Yeah, I feel like sometimes it's good to have a hobby on the side that is completely unrelated to to business for sure that you can yeah. still use, especially as a business owner, because you wear so many hats, you have so much responsibility, finding something that, that is unrelated. Uh, and in my view, seems seems a little crazy. I'm still trying to, you know, work up the cojones to to pick up the little gopher snakes. Yeah. Um, and even <laughs> those guys aren't always happy with me. So that's yeah. always a fun adventure, chasing those guys down. Yep. Yeah. So, so walk me through, you started the business, uh, six years ago, a year after you found house call pro, what was the, what was kind of the, the reason for even starting to look for something? What caused you to do that? And how did you even find out about house call pro? Um, house call pro was introduced to me by Kyle newbie, which is the owner of the dryer vent. Mm -hmm. uh, he, I kind of considered him my mentor towards the beginning. We just kind of met through social media and just started talking and he was a few years ahead of me in his business. And, um, I was using another app that was just it's real cheap. Didn't really do a whole lot, but it worked. And Kyle kept telling me like, Hey, you should try house call pro. You should try house call pro. And, um, finally I just, you know, pulled the trigger and joined and realized that, you know, that's what's the smart move. There was a lot more that we can do with it that actually we can make money. Yeah, I have to give all the credit to, to Kyle. He's the one that got me into it. Yeah, I think uh, having not just official mentors, but just having other folks like in your circle, especially in your niche too, you know, that have done well is, uh, you know, taking tips and reaching out to folks that are a year or two or three or four ahead of you yeah. because they've probably experienced what you're about to experience. And uh, in the same way that you probably have some tips for, you know, yourself, if you were to start again, you know, if you're like rewind the tape six years ago, what would you tell, you know, baby Dave, uh, you know, what, what, here's what we got to do, guys. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's, it's good to find that. What, what are some things that you would tell kind of your younger self when you're first starting out the business? Is there something you would you would change or or know about or do that you think others might save some time and if, if they listen to you? Yeah. Um, one, I think one of the biggest things that I regret in probably the first three years of business, um, Kyle was really the only person I talked to. He lives in Virginia. I live in Arizona. We never really worried about, you know, being in each other's territory. So sharing information was, um, there was no stress, you know, and, um, I, I was always, for those first three years, I was always hesitant to talk to other people in the industry kind of just felt like I keep the secrets to myself. I don't want my competition to know what I'm doing. Um, and then I started branching out into the community, you know, into some of the groups of um, owners that are in this industry and meeting people in person and sharing what we're doing uh, to the point where here in Prescott, um, there's another company that is, is a competitor. Him and I are, we started to become friends, you know, it's like we're sharing information with each other. And the reason why I bring that up is once I started doing that, I started to realize like, holy moly, I'm just learning 
so much from networking with these people that, you know, I used to just not want anything to do with um, just because I was scared and naive of, of what, you know, what I'm telling them. And how to my business. How'd you overcome that fear? Like, I feel people say that, but then have a hard time doing it. What was that moment where you're like, Screw it. I'm just going to give them a call and uh, go have a beer with them or whatever you did. It was probably mostly social media, seeing some of these groups um, specialized for our industry and seeing some of these people just share information in these groups and then doing things like, um, you know, there's like training events you can go to with some of our big vendors and stuff and then meeting these people in person and, um, just starting to realize, you know, there was value in that, you know, um, just kind of seeing other people do it. I was just like, okay, you know what, this is kind of cool. You kind of make friends in the industry and, uh, you kind of don't feel so alone in it. You know, it's kind of nice. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And look, every house has a dryer vent. I don't know every house, but I'd say most homes oh, have dryer yeah. vents Yeah. and, uh, most homes probably don't know they should be cleaned on some kind of regular basis, right? What's, what's kind of your suggestion or how do you think about that when it comes to your customer database? Um, as far as how often driving should be cleaned and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, a lot of our customer base on the driving side comes from, uh, I'd say most of them probably come from when they already have an issue, you know, their driver's slowing down, stopped working. Appliance guy came out and said, no, your dryer's fine. Your dryer vent's clogged. You need to call these guys. Um, mm -hmm. That's probably mm -hmm. a good portion of, of our customers. And then we have, you know, the customers where they learned from whether it's an article they read online or sometimes insurance companies will send out letters like, hey, get your dryer vent cleaned. Um, you know, that's we consider that our, that's our preventative maintenance side of, of, our, mm -hmm. of our customer base. Um, but, you know, once a year is the average. Um, However, that's sometimes that's overkill for some people. Sometimes it's not enough. Yeah, uh, depends on how many kids they have or what how yeah. many clothes they're washing. I guess exactly. Um, yeah, even just the brand of the dryer. Some dryers have stronger blowers, so they can blow the lint oh. out better. Or um, the exhaust system. How many elbows are in the system, or the cap on the outside? Things that can cause lint to build up much quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. it's it's tricky. You know, once a year, I feel like is a good starting point, but it's not necessarily accurate for everybody. Right. And so for your existing customer database, like how are you mining them or reminding them to come back to you and uh, have, have it serviced again? Like how, what does that workflow look like for you? Sure. Yeah. We, um, what we tell our customers, uh, so we like, for example, you got the national fire protection association, right? They say once a year, um, so what we tell our customers is after you have it cleaned professionally, by us or somebody else that's doing it professionally, have it done again in a year, see what comes out. And based on that, um, we might be more comfortable with saying, hey, let's do this in three years instead. Um, we don't want to go against big organizations until we can confirm what builds up inside of that duct system. Um, and then based on what feedback we get from the customer, we kind of just put them on our schedule as an unconfirmed job. And then as the year comes up or two years, three years, whatever we decided on, we just reach out and confirm it. So you've got unconfirmed jobs on the calendar just kind of sitting there. And then as you're going through, you can kind of plan your route or plan your day to make sure you're doing it in an efficient way. Yeah. You know, it's nice having the unconfirmed jobs because we can always move them around. You know, they're not confirmed. So we kind of move them where we want them to be and then, you know, call mm -hmm. them and hopefully it works. That's awesome. What are some, maybe some underrated features, uh, you know, people use house call pro for a lot of things, but. There's this one feature you use that you think probably doesn't get enough attention. Couldn't, doesn't even have to be a huge feature, but what, what do you, what do you think? Or maybe what do you think for your industry? Um, probably the, the marketing side. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and I just, and I say that only because I very recently kind of started digging into it. Mm -hmm. Um, so maybe other pros are kind of doing the same thing. They don't really use it. Um, but, you know, I've been able to, you know, send emails out to all my customers and let them know about the new service we're offering. Um, air duct cleaning, offer discounts, and um, just kind of have that line of communication through House Call Pro. It's kind of nice. You, your customer database is there. It makes sense just to use that to send those emails out and stay in contact with your customers. 
Yeah. I mean, look, I think for a lot of pros, they don't value their own customer database enough and or rehash or however you want to call it, but reach yep. out to those customers and yep. be able to do that all in one spot and make it really easy to do. It's kind of a no brainer. And I yep. think for you, especially you're adding, you know, a new division, you know, yeah. a, new, a new type of service, you know, on the, on the air duct side. Yeah. Uh, and so on the air duct side, I feel like there's a lot of stuff out there, especially when it comes to scams. Uh, you know, I see folks that are like, oh yeah, they say they cleaned it, but they didn't really, or maybe the truck isn't big enough. They need to have like a much bigger truck and there's no way they did anything. Yeah. Like what, what is, what is that? Uh, and then how do you like market against that or like with it? Yeah. You know, it's, it is challenging for us. I'd say it's probably a really big challenge that we deal with. Um, one just being subpar work or just, you know, a total scam, um, our industry, unfortunately, there's not most states, there's no regulations saying you have to be licensed or certified or anything like that. Um, one of the things we do is we do hold an Arizona contractor's license. Uh, we're dry exhaust certified, NADCA certified. We go the extra step to get all those things that we don't necessarily have to have legally, but to prove that we are trained and we know what we're doing. Um, and then you got the other side of it where you got someone, you know, in a little car with a little uh, little brush and rods and a drill and kind of doing like DIY style. You know, if you go to Google, how do I clean my dryer vent? You're going to see these little kits online when you hook up to a drill and um, usually creates bigger problems. It creates bigger blockages. The rod snap. Now the brush is stuck in there. Uh, but then you got you got guys that are kind of doing the same thing and those kind of DIY style, but, you know, they're being hired to do it. Um, and then as far as like the scams go, that's, um, we get, we get asked about it a lot. Um, we've been personally affected by it, um, where the scammers have pretended to be us, um, yeah. customers that'll call and say, Hey, you guys never showed up. And then, you know, we dig a little bit deeper and we realize that they were one of the scammers gave them our name, um, to try to get the job. And. The way that these scams work, this is the question we get all the time. And if you're on Facebook, you see it. All the neighborhood groups, you see these posts, you know, um, I have a small family-owned business. We're struggling and uh, we need to get some more jobs. You know, if you need your air ducts cleaned or your dryer vent cleaned, we're going to give you a crazy good discount, right? It's usually a little sob story. Uh, it's a fake profile. Mm -hmm. um, and what it basically is, is it's lead generation is really what it is. Um, so to call it a, a total a scam, maybe it's not a scam. It's very misleading. It's um, it's a lead generation company from out of the country, um, and they post in just thousands of groups all day long on Facebook, collecting those leads, um, and then those leads get sold to companies that want to buy them. Um, in my experience. I guess I can't speak for everybody, but the people that are buying those leads are usually the, the people you don't want in your home. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't normally have a Google listing and five star rated and a good reputation. Therefore, they're relying on buying these leads um, to get these jobs. Right. Uh, and the problem with it is you have no clue who's showing up. You know, these people will claim to be another company. It happens to us all the time. They'll say we're dryer vent pros and people go to Google and they say, oh, yeah, they have good ratings. And they say, mm -hmm. yep. And then they sell that lead to whoever wants to buy it and they just show up. Um, and most of the time they're not, they're not doing it right. Uh, they're, they're just kind of leaving you hanging there. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And you know, if it's a scam, is it a scam? I don't, you know, if they show up and do work, you know, uh, I don't know if it's a scam. It's just, you know, very subpar work and it's very misleading because you don't realize that your information was just sold to some random person that's going to show up. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, as like a homeowner, do you look for the signage on the truck, you know, the branded hat, the branded, you know, shirts you have, do you look for those things to be like, hey, wait, the person I think is showing up is actually showing up or not? Uh, yeah. That's, that's the next question. But I guess, you know, that's, that's where, you know, if a homeowner doesn't do their diligence, and they just let someone in the home, you know, that's, uh, that's part of them too. Yeah. You know, I, I tell people the best way to avoid it is, I guess, one, just don't hire people from those types of postings. But, you know, just go straight to Google, you know, find that company you want to hire and call the number on that listing. Because um, the totally. number they're going to give you on Facebook is not going to match up the number from the actual company. Yeah, I guess that's the other way to like, you know, fact check too. It's like, do those numbers are the same? If not, yeah. you know, ask questions for sure. Right. Yep.
So, so, you know, you, you're a big user of online booking. You've got that set up, um, same with, same with pipeline. Uh, what, what do you think about online booking and, and why do you think it's a competitive advantage for you? Um, it's, it, it, it kind of just streams, streamlines the process for us. You know, not everybody's going to do the online booking, but the people that do, it makes it really easy for us. You know, we just get the text message on our phones, the alerts, an email. Um, I think you get alerted three different ways. Um, yep. Makes it impossible to miss it. And you already got the customer's information, their address, phone number, the service they're requesting. Um, and we typically just start out with a text message. You know, we just kind of figure if they're, if they're using the online booking feature, they're probably very tech savvy and, and uh, mm -hmm. they didn't call us. So maybe they just, they just want to text. So we always text them right away. Hey, we got your online booking. You want to schedule via text. Um, and we just kind of go from there and it just makes it a lot easier for us. What percentage would you say of your business comes via online booking versus not like, what are people losing out on potentially by not using something like this? Oh gosh, I'd say 30% maybe probably about 30%. Wow. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, that's a good, it's a good amount of people. It's a, it's a good chunk. Um, yeah, I think. You know, it's important for small businesses, especially home service businesses, to make sure that, you know, you're able to be booked the way that the homeowner wants to book you. Yeah. Because not everyone's got the time for a phone call to pick up the phone. You even want to call the phone. You got you got people that are like, hey, if I can book you online and text, you never have to talk to you until you come to the house. Yeah. That's great. You yeah, know? the pricing is all right there online. So, you know, there's full transparency that and they already know what they're signing up for. So we know when we get that alert. One, they already saw the price for the service, so they're not price shopping. We don't have to try to explain pricing to them. They saw the price and they said, yep, I'm going to book. Yep. Uh, so that's another another bonus to that. Yeah, and I think some people, they'll just go, okay, well, Dave and his crew, look, you know, they're they're five star. So, you know, whatever he's pricing his jobs at, that's a fair price. That's what I'm going to pay. Like, they're not, they're not doing the window shopping. They're not calling up. They're not booking five other pros online. Right, you know? right. Exactly. Um, and so I think that's the value too, is you get someone that gets to check off a list from their, you know, their, their honeydew list or their, you know, Hey, I got to accomplish that this week and yeah. it's done yep. versus having to go out and give bids, figure all that stuff out. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd say definitely too, as you're doing, um, you know, sub thousand dollar jobs too. make it more like, a, you know, what do you buy online? That's sub thousand dollars. I spend so much money on Amazon and online on things <laughs> and checking out, you know, it's just like a quick, it's a quick decision. So like yeah, keeping yeah. that same stream, if it's, if it's something really large, you know, maybe put some services online that are smaller ones, like, uh, tune ups or quick repairs or filters or, you know, things yeah. that are that sub thousand dollar thing. And then once you get your foot in the door, you know, uh, explain a replacement or given an option or something like that. But for what you yeah. guys are doing, it's, I mean, it's perfect. It makes, makes a hundred percent sense. Yeah. Yeah. What is, um, what does pipeline do for you then? So once they book online, talk to me about like pipeline and how you guys are using that. Sure. Um, the pipeline we, um, uh, to be honest, is mostly used by my office manager, June. Um, mm -hmm. and it's actually been a lifesaver for us because what was happening before the pipeline is, you know, you'd get um, people requesting estimates or, you know, the unscheduled jobs, for whatever reason, you know, they all start piling up. Next thing you know, you've got like 200 unscheduled jobs, whether they're estimates or customers that wanted you to follow up. And then you kind of have to go through one at a time and figure out, okay, what's up with these? Um, mm -hmm. Pipeline is cool because you can even create your own categories. So, um, you know, let's say, let's, for example, we use it a lot for our, our, um, our annual cleanings. You know, if we text, text or call a customer and they say, you know, let's, let's do next month. You know, we can mm -hmm. move it over to the pipeline, the section on the pipeline that, you know, needs, needs follow up. Um, and then, you know, we have the different categories we've created. So if it's slower, for example, we can go to a category where we had customers that showed interest, but decided not to schedule. So we can start calling those customers and see if they're ready to book. Um, uh, it's based, it's basically just allowed us to have full organization of all of our jobs, whether they're estimates, quotes, scheduled, unscheduled, um, just at a, at a glance, looking at the computer, you kind of see everything organized and made a big difference for us. 
Yeah, and being able to have the custom categories and then custom automations for each two is really nice because you might have a different workflow or a different process or like <laughs> you might have like urgency or priority level columns. You might yeah. have, you know, reach out to them next month category and just like, yeah. boom, you drop them all there. But I think the, the golden nugget there is, you know, when you're slow and you have a whole bunch of unsold estimates or unsold jobs or unscheduled jobs, whatever it may be, if you have that column, that's a perfect thing to have an office manager just go through and say like, hey, we're going to be in your area. We've got an extra special discount. You may or may not actually be in the area, right? But like you may just be hunting to put jobs on the board. Yeah. Um, and, and those opportunities don't slip through the cracks anymore. Yeah. And I think that happens way too often because there's so much going on in, 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 in our pros businesses on any given day. It's so easy to forget if you're not keeping track yeah. of some. Yeah. No, no, I'll, I'll tell you that the times that, you know, we have little slowdowns and we go to that column. Mm -hmm. every single time it works, you know, we're able to get some, some jobs out of it and kind of fill the schedule for that week. Um, yeah. So it's definitely useful. And I think before pipeline, we weren't doing that, <laughs> you know, it was yeah. just too much work to try to find those, those jobs. Yeah, definitely. It, it, uh, it easily pays for itself many times over uh, every yeah. single month for sure. It's one of those features you gotta, you gotta add on, especially if you got uh, a lot of opportunities and a lot of jobs just coming in uh, the door because you're going to forget about them. They're like even your best office manager is going to not be able to handle it. You yeah. know, if it's just if you're just looking at a calendar with a bunch of unscheduled jobs, you're like, ah, I'm going to click through Where all these. This is hard. <laughs> this is hard. Yeah. This is... Well, I knew this would happen. We're we're almost at 30 minutes. Um, what what are some things, maybe, or some tips or tricks or advice you'd give someone that's either trying to get into the dryer vent industry or just a, a, a new business owner kind of starting out, what, what sort of uh, tips do you have for them? Uh, yeah. I mean, if they were getting into, you know, exactly, you know, dryer vents or air ducts, um, I would say get trained and get certified, mm -hmm. um, do that homework. Um, it's, it's, it's involved. If you want to do it correctly and professionally, there is a lot to it. Uh, mm -hmm. So definitely take the time to get those certifications and get some training, find um, a mentor, you know, like I said, Kyle, he was kind of my mentor towards the beginning. It's kind of turned into a friendship at this point. And, um, and then on the air duct side, I very quickly made friends with someone that's very well known in the industry and um, actually flew out to uh, Virginia where he lives. And he took me out for a week and kind of showed me the ropes, you know, and I got certified. So I think we touched on that earlier, but, you know, don't, don't hesitate to reach out to people in the industry that, that might be willing to kind of take you out in the field with them. And you might have people be hesitant if they're in your area, you know, that's why it worked out for me where, you know, he was all the way in Virginia. So that he knew he wasn't a training a, a competitor. Sure. Uh, and yeah, things like, um, House Call Pro, you know, that's a good one. Like I wish that the first year, right when I started the business, I should have been using House Call Pro. Um, it is tempting to go with some of these really cheap or, or free apps um, to get started. But I think we probably left a lot of revenue on the table, just uh, not jumping right into a, a professional software like House Call Pro. Uh, yeah. And then, yeah, I mean, just business ownership in general, um, I, I do. I like to tell people, you know, how hard it is. It's rewarding, but don't expect it to be easy. Um, I feel like a lot of people start a business because, you know, they're tired of the nine to five, you know, they want to make their own hours and then they start a business and they realize they're working more than nine to five now, <laughs> you know, you're, you've doubled your hours and, and, you, and your stress levels and stuff. So, uh, I think it's important to, to understand that, you know, it is, it's not easy to do and, uh, and really know what you're getting yourself into. That's awesome. Yeah, I think those are all really great tips. And um, definitely too, don't ever think you're you're too early or too small to start with something like House Call Pro because you're building up that customer database from day one and don't let those reviews slip through the cracks, those opportunities, you know, yeah. all those unsold estimates, like all that stuff compounds. So um, just start, do it right the first time if you're serious, you know, right. um, and uh, you know, you'll, you'll definitely get those returns out of it. And like anything in life, anything that's you know worth having is going to be hard, and business ownership yeah. is going to be hard. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not the easy track to success. But if you love what you do and you love that autonomy and building something really neat and be able to leave a legacy, it's 100% the right thing to do. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. 
Well, Dave, it's been awesome. Thanks for uh, being on here with us today. And for everybody else that's listening, we'll tune in uh, next week for another Super Pro on the House Call Pro Super Pro podcast. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Roland. The Super Pro podcast is brought to you by House Call Pro, the leading platform for the home service industry. House Call Pro streamlines your workflows and simplifies everything from scheduling and dispatching to communication and billing. Unlock the full potential of your home service business with House Call Pro. Work smarter and more efficiently with streamlined workflows and detailed analytics. Win more business and serve your customers well, every single time. Join more than 40,000 home service pros who have already revolutionized their businesses. Work smarter with streamlined workflows, get organized with centralized information, and scale your business your way. Learn more at housecallpro.com.